Hey y'all, I'm Patrick Haggerty with ROI Training, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to easily create a Google Cloud Storage bucket. Now, I have a Google document where I collect a lot of links for Google Cloud that I find useful. You can find that file at tinyurl.com slash ROI dash GCP links. Uh, in that file in the data section, I actually have a subsection on cloud storage. There's a lot of nice links related to cloud storage and how it works, starting with the main cloud storage documentation homepage. Visiting that will give you a nice overview of what cloud storage is, how it works, and also you'll see there's a subsection that would be a nice follow-on to this video on actually creating buckets. To create a bucket, I need a Google Cloud project. I'm going into my project here. I can go to the main navigation menu, and cloud storage will be found right below compute in the storage section. Let me click on storage. It'll show any buckets I have right now, and I can click create bucket to build a new one. The first question you will have to answer is you'll have to come up with the name of a bucket. Um, the bucket name needs to be globally unique. So you might have to play with it a little bit to see if you can come up with a globally unique name. Video demos taken by somebody else, video demo 40, 42, that's free. Next question you'll have to answer is your location where you store the data. There's three choices. I can store it in a particular Google Cloud region, like US Central One and Iowa, or US East One and South Carolina, or something like that. Your next choice really is multi-regional. Multi-regional, you can pick a particular part of the world. If I pick US, for example, what Google guarantees is it'll be stored in at least two regions in the United States at least 100 miles apart. If it's important to you to know exactly which two regions, that's what dual regional does. Okay. I can pick Americas, and now I know it's going to have a copy in Iowa and South Carolina. A little more expensive, but um, high, higher on the availability end. Right? If you don't know, just go with regional. I'm going to go with regional. I'm going to put it in US Central 1. Next decision you'll have to make is a storage class. Standard storage class is hot data. That means data that you're frequently accessing. A regional, store, a regional storage bucket with hot data is going to be about 20 bucks a terabyte. Notice accessing is free. Nearline, Coldline, Archive are all for seldomly accessed data. Access it about once a month, Nearline. Access it about once a quarter, Coldline. Hope you never have to access it again or certainly no more than once a year, Archival. The Nearline, Coldline, Archive are all cheaper on the storage front but they come with an access penalty. Archive is only $1.20 a terabyte to store, but to access that, it would be 50 bucks a terabyte to access. So that's why Nearline, Coldline, Archive don't make sense for hot data, frequently accessed data. When in doubt, go with standard. Next decision you'll have to make, do you want every file to have its own permissions? Access control list, that's fine grain, that's the default. Or would you like all the files in the bucket to have the exact same level of access? You can make that decision and you have up to uh, uh, 90 days to change your mind. Last, we have some more advanced options. How is it encrypted, retention labels, a couple other things. You might go read the documentation for that. Once you're finished with your selections, hit create. It will take just a couple of moments and you will have a nice shiny new storage bucket ready to store your files. I'm Patrick Haggerty with ROI Training. I hope you've enjoyed this video.